everything in a machine gets stored as a number, even characters. So we need to agree on which number represents which character. Early on, IBM created a mapping named EBCDIC, and it looked like this. You can find an encoding of a character in this chart by locating the character and then concatenating its column label onto its row label. For example, lowercase f is 86 in hex, which is 134 in decimal. While this table looks like they didn't use all of the values, there are some control characters that aren't shown, but you're right, it still didn't use all of the values. Notice that in this table, it looks like it contains numbers, but it doesn't. Those are the characters that represent the numbers. This curvy shape is the shape you draw when you mean the quantity two. The character that is drawn does not have the value of the number it represents. Around the same time, there was a competing standard named ASCII. Like EBCDIC, it has values for control characters, but it has one great feature that, in my opinion, made it win over EBCDIC. The uppercase, lowercase, and digit characters are in consecutive groups, which is not true for EBCDIC. This allows us to use conditionals like these to check if a character is in one of those types of characters. And it's really easy to convert between uppercases and lowercases too. Now, in fairness, you can do these things in EBCDIC, but the math requires bitwise operations or more complex conditions. Both of these encodings have one terrible weakness. They are entirely English character focused. They have no ability to encode characters from other alphabets. ASCII has one more bit in its usual 8-bit encoding. So they made extended ASCII that helps some of our European friends, but that clearly wasn't enough. The most recent character encoding is Unicode. It encodes more than 143,000 characters from 154 modern and historic scripts and includes emoji. It also encodes language details like the direction of the writing and how characters get packed together in languages like Korean. Once we have the integers that Unicode maps to, there's a question of how we package them to store them. EBCDIC and ASCII both use straight 8 bits to store an integer, but a fixed length encoding would be very inefficient with Unicode. Stick with me, I'll explain that soon. So often, Unicode is stored using UTF-8. UTF-8 is a variable length encoding one integer could be stored using anywhere from one to four bytes long. The values between zero and hex 7f, integers that use no more than seven bits, are stored in one byte with a leading zero. The values between hex 80 and hex 7ff, integers that use between eight and 11 bits, are stored in two bytes. The first byte is 110, followed by the highest five bits of the integer we're storing. And the second byte is one zero, followed by the last six bits of the integer we're storing. The last two lines show the rest of UTF-8 encodings. The patterns of zeros and ones at the beginning of each byte tell the reader how to decode that byte. If the byte you get starts with zero, just use those seven bits. If the first byte starts with a one, then the number of ones tells you how many bytes are in the number, and all of the subsequent bytes start with one zero. Here are a few example. The red bits are UTF-8 specified, and the black bits are the value we're encoding. Notice that we needed to add some leading zeros to fill in the spaces UTF-8 required. There's one more really important benefit of using UTF-8 with Unicode. The characters that are encoded in ASCII we're also given the same values in Unicode. When we store Unicode using UTF-8, those values will be encoded as one byte with a leading zero. That is exactly how they're stored in ASCII, so Unicode stored with UTF-8 is backward compatible to ASCII. One more point. Remember I, when I said a fixed length encoding of Unicode would be inefficient? Well, even if you're encoding in a different language, many of the characters you encode are still English characters. 
For example, the HTML of web pages uses English characters even if the page is displaying text in Korean. That means that if we use Unicode with UTF-8, most characters are only one byte long. A fixed length encoding of Unicode would require 18 bits for each character. So even though the longest characters in UTF-8 coding require four bytes, since the characters with short encodings happen way more frequently, the average bytes per character is less with a UTF-8 encoding than with a fixed length encoding. Unicode is used with other options than UTF-8, and some languages still use ASCII or EBCDIC. So you have to check with your programming language to see what it defaults to and to see what options you can control when you're storing characters.